When the 2018 second generation of the Nissan Leaf electric car launched in September last year, I've got to admit I had some concerns about Nissan's decision not to use an actively called firmly managed battery pack. After the battery pack problems of some first generation Leafs, mainly premature aging in high temperature states, it was expected that Nissan would learn from its mistakes. But it didn't. Putting a higher density battery pack in the same physical space as its previous first generation Leaf battery packs. Soon after that car, the 2018 Leaf, hit the market, it didn't take too long for Nissan customers to start complaining about the thermal throttling on quick charging that Nissan was applying to keep the 2018's Leaf's 40 kilowatt hour battery pack safe. Although cars could usually have one rapid charge per day that wasn't thermally throttled, subsequent rapid charges, especially in hot weather, left DC quick charge times increasing to hours rather than minutes. Hashtag RapidGate. Nissan said soon after the launch of the 40 kilowatt hour 2018 Leaf that we'd see a longer range variant hit the market a year or so later. Called the Leaf E Plus, it was promised with a longer range thanks to a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, a faster 0 to 60 time thanks to more powerful motors, and 100 kilowatt DC quick charging, twice the power of the current 40 kilowatt hour model. And since the battery pack would be made by LG Chem, a first for Nissan, we assumed it would come with liquid cooling and heating just like many other LG Chem battery cars like the Chevrolet Bolt EV. Now it turns out that's not the case, at least according to current reports. And I'm going to tell you what that all means in just a second. But first, I'd like to thank Climate Exchange and its third annual Carbon Raffle for supporting this show. Enter today at carbonraffle.org for a chance to win your choice of a Tesla Model X, Model S or Model 3 Performance Plus as first prize, with a Tesla Model 3 all-wheel drive and Tesla Model 3 standard range as runners-up prizes. The news that Nissan isn't going to have a liquid-cooled battery pack for the Nissan Leaf E Plus comes courtesy of Electrive, which reported earlier this week that German Nissan dealers were told at a closed event that the 60 kilowatt hour Leaf variant would not have a liquid-cooled battery pack. The reason? Well, it's less clear. If I had to guess, I'd say it's because the 60 kilowatt hour Leaf uses exactly the same base platform and chassis as the shorter range 40 kilowatt hour variant. And while it's using different battery cells from a different manufacturer, I'm going to guess that Nissan engineers felt that entering an active liquid cooling battery system was simply too complex. I should note here that this is my take on this and I've not been able to get anyone from Nissan to either confirm or deny my theory. But if we're talking space, it kind of makes sense. The physical battery pack space for a Nissan Leaf E Plus is just the same as that for the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf. And having seen the way the latter is engineered, there's really not a huge amount of space for extra cooling and pipes. In other words, it's poor engineering, and that's going to put a lot of people off the longer range Leaf. However, there are a couple of things to bear in mind here before you get all angry in the comments section. First, and most importantly, is the news that Nissan plans to use the same fan-based cooling system found in the Nissan EMV200 electric minivan. Rather than pump liquid coolant around the battery pack via especially thermally conductive chiller plates, as is the case in the Bolt EV, the ENV200 has a small radiator stationed at the front of the battery pack, which connects to the van's air conditioning system. Coolant is pumped into the radiator, and then a fan behind that radiator pulls air into the battery pack through the fins of the radiator, cooling the air and force air conditioning through special chambers in the battery box. While it's true that liquid transfers heat more efficiently than air, it appears Nissan believes an air-conditioned active cooling system is the best option for the Leaf E+. And if you consider that the physical volume of a battery pack is far less than the interior of a car's cabin, and air conditioning can usually keep you chilled on a super hot day without any problems, it's certainly technically possible to keep the battery pack cool with air rather than liquid. And so far, I've heard of no major problems with this system in the Nissan ENV200, which Nissan designed to be rapid charged far more frequently than the LEAF due to its target market, that's commercial vehicles. Second, we need to remember that a larger capacity battery pack is less likely to be pushed to its limits than a smaller capacity battery pack since batteries tend to heat up most when being used at the extremes of their state of charge, nearly empty or nearly full, the larger capacity battery pack should result in less battery strain and also less battery wear. Less strain means less heat, which keeps the pack cooler. 
Third, an air cooling system, while less efficient than a liquid cooling system, is a little less expensive to maintain and probably easier to disassemble when servicing the vehicle. Unlike a liquid cooled battery system, which requires coolant has to be pumped out of the battery pack prior to battery removal, the radiator and pumped air arrangement is a little easier to disassemble quickly and, I'd guess, also a little cheaper to make. That said, it's also noisier, at least if videos of the ENV 200's cooling system are anything to go by. In short then, Nissan's 60kWh LEAF E Plus air cooling system is better than what we've seen in any LEAF before it and should, at least on paper, keep the battery pack cooler. But will customers trust Nissan? Well, that's something completely different and I'd guess will rely on quite a few reviews and tests before any final decisions are made. And of course, liquid cooling would have been better. Nissan had planned to unveil the LEAF E Plus in Los Angeles last week, but it's now going to make its debut at CES 2019 in Las Vegas this coming January. I'll be there with the rest of the team, so we'll be able to tell you more then. Before I go, I'd like to thank the Carbon Raffle once again for sponsoring this episode. If you haven't heard of the Carbon Raffle, it's run by Climate Exchange, a non-profit focused on helping moving the world towards a low carbon economy by working with policymakers and businesses to implement carbon pricing schemes that take into account the actual societal and material cost of things we do every single day. This not only helps make us more aware of the impact that we're having on the planet, but it also helps level the playing field between dirty and clean energy, generation, transit and industry. This year, Climate Exchange's Carbon Raffle is bigger than ever before, with three different chances to win a Tesla. The first prize is a choice of a Model S, Model X or Model 3 performance, while the second prize winner will take home a Tesla Model 3 long range or wheel drive. Third place, well, they're going to get a Model 3 standard range. Tickets are limited, so act today by going to carbonraffle.org. Full terms and conditions are on the site for you to read, and the lucky winners will be drawn on New Year's Day. I am super happy to be helping spread the word, and good luck to absolutely everyone who enters. That's it. Don't forget to give us your thumbs up or your thumbs down. Leave a comment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, without whom we'd never be able to produce all of this daily content for you to all enjoy. If you fancy it, you can join them for yourselves at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.